You are listening to the Amodamar podcast. In this series, Amoda explores her essential teaching through conversation and excerpts from interviews and events. To find out more about events and to sign up for her newsletter, go to www.amodamar.com. Please subscribe, comment and share if this podcast moves you. And if you feel called to donate, please go to the website. Thanks for listening and we hope you enjoy. Greetings, <clears throat> everyone. My name is Kavi. Welcome back to another podcast with Amoda Ma. Hello, Amoda. Hello, Kavi. So we're here again uh, for one of our um, specialist, improvised, hopefully interesting uh, conversations where <clears throat> I'm going to be uh, addressing to you, talking with you about um, a, a subject that we've got called myths, illusions, and impediments on the spiritual path. Um, a few years ago, I seem to remember, you wrote a book called Embodied Enlightenment. To these eyes, it was it was a book ahead of its time, uh, because at that time, at least in certain camps, you know, there was the pointing to the enlightened state as being the salve, the solution to the endless problem of the human condition. Um, you addressed it, uh, I, I believe, really beautifully in, in that book and kind of attempted or, or even got somewhere with demythologizing, busting some of the myths, uh, having a look at the illusions and then addressing some of the impediments on the spiritual path, what we call this the path of awakening or the path of enlightenment. Um, further, further to that, you know, we 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 have um, put on a couple a, a lot of courses, and the most recent course that actually we have been doing the first uh, session on today is the five week course, uh, pretty much busting the myths. Yeah, what it means to 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 embody awakening or embody enlightenment if we want to use that term which as you know is one of my favorite terms but it's banded around so we, we we talk about it and the first session of the five-week course this morning was exactly what we're going to explore a little bit more of today get into some of the nuances maybe hopefully about the myths the illusions and some of the impediments on the spiritual path. It's a nuanced subject, if subject is the right word, but uh, certainly in, in my experience and definitely in your experience and with the many seekers that we've, you know, and people that we've come into contact with, um, there are a, a lot of veils. There are many veils um, that we have to kind of find our way through to discover what is truer than true is true in the deepest heart or wherever it is so that's the pitch Amoda. um as i'm talking i you know where should we where should we go with this first of all what are the some of the common pitfalls myths you know how would you how would you approach this how would you talk about it how do you want to talk about it <clears throat> One of the things I've noticed uh, most prominently on my own spiritual path and in speaking with so many others on their spiritual path is the tendency to have um, uh, the tendency to myth making. Yeah, in other words, the unexamined ideas, hopes, imaginations of what uh, a spiritual life looks like, of what being a spiritual person looks like, of what awakening looks like, and of what enlightenment looks like. And I use the word awakening and enlightenment interchangeably. Um 
you know, we, we, we set out on the spiritual path mostly, most commonly when, when we're in pain, some kind of psychological or emotional pain. And perhaps we've done some work on a psychological level, maybe on an emotional level, not always. And so spirituality, uh, awakening, enlightenment um, offers its its uh, you know its picture of peace and uh, joy and unbounded love um, and so on. So it, it it is a kind of salvation. Well, it is a salvation, but not the way that the mind or the self um, creates the image of salvation. <laughs> It is the resolution to all problems, all personal problems. It is the resolution to the problem of the human experience. It, it, it is a resolution to the agitation of the uh, unexamined mind. It is the resolution to uh, the, the, the suffering that comes from a closed heart and so on and so on. So it is the ultimate salvation, but not the way the self, the ego self, the unexamined self, the unawake self imagines it to be. And that's where the myth-making comes in. So from, from the point of view, from the perspective of the, the personhood who is seeking salvation, who is seeking liberation from suffering, the much coveted state of awakening or enlightenment or liberation or self-realization is seen only from that perspective, which is about me. And so there's this imagination, this hope um, that it will take all my problems away, that it will give me a perfect life or a spiritual life, um, and, and then, so, so then here we are snowballing out of control in some ways <laughs> in that, you know, a spiritual life. Let's look at that. What is a spiritual life for some people? That means, uh, perhaps everything's very easy. Everything's flowing well. Everything is very loving and uplifted all the time. Uh, they're meeting with like-minded people or living in a like-minded community and everything is abundant and everything is creative. And we can have all sorts of ideas what that means. Yeah. The perfect world. It can mean, you know, being a spiritual being, being a spiritual person. I do my meditation practice and I have all the time in the world. I'm not burdened by um, mundane things like uh, paying the bills or having to take care of, uh, you know, tying your camel down and all that sort of thing. So there's all sorts of myth-making that starts right from the beginning. And then it, it gets more sophisticated than that, yeah? Yeah, that's <clears throat> right. That's where I'm heading. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you'd be surprised, Kavi, how um, even <laughs> in sophisticated, if I may use that term, si si uh, spiritual seekers, sincere spiritual seekers, that myth, that idea, that hope is pernicious. Yeah, that my life somehow will not be the way it is now. <clears throat> feeling like an outsider, feeling like an alien, um, not having other people to speak to that are like-minded, uh, being bogged down by the, by the everyday reality of being human. You'd be surprised how much that still plays itself out. Yeah. So we can get more sophisticated with it, but it stems from there. Well, it's not just uh, sophisticated in the in the sense of the you know we are, our understanding of sophistication of of the mind actually you know it gets it gets as you, what what I hear you point to is getting deeper it gets deeper and deeper and deeper because even on the superficial level of saying I've got a, a you know I'm have, I'm I'm okay because I'm living a spiritual life points to something you know deeper a real you know pr problem with the human condition that we're trying to. I don't know, solve. Or... That's right. The idea, the hope, the imagination 
that awakening or enlightenment or self-realization will bring an end to the human experience. The suffering now, of the human The experience. suffering of the human yeah. experience. We look around, yeah, the, the spiritual seeker looks around or looks back or at historical figures. Yeah, I, I won't name names, but traditional figures of enlightenment, whether it's in the field, not field, but in the tradition <laughs> of Buddhism, <laughs> or whether it's in the tradition of Advaita or whatever it might be, non-duality, uh, so on and so on, and sees enlightened individuals who seem both historical you know in previous ages and in more recent ages in our current age who seem to live an exalted life a life without uh, uh, the mess of the human experience that somehow they've risen above it somehow they get taken care of yeah we see the the, the guru image who gets taken care of people around him usually or her do things for him her make the food and provide the home for them to live in and there's a whole community a sangha and they're elevated and they seem to have risen above the whole mess of the earthly dimension um that's where it gets all tangled up yeah somehow we don't think as the, of these individuals as having to um you know do the things that ordinary human beings do. They've either transcended it on a practical level, yeah, so they don't have to get their hands dirty in the nitty-gritty of the world because they've been exalted to guru status or enlightened status, or they've transcended it or and they've transcended it on a feeling level. They don't have any yeah. intense emotions. They don't feel the same pain that that ordinary human beings feel and so on and so on so it, it's very dense this and very pernicious this idea that has been perpetuated by certain imagery um, that has been perpetuated by certain teachers or teachings that don't mm. explore this aspect and this you, is all do you mean the emotional particularly in a, in a way yeah the feeling level the the the, the mess of the of of the human emotions i think all of it mm. it's all it's all tangled up together mm, it is uh, it, it just hasn't been examined it hasn't been exposed how is enlightened consciousness awakened consciousness when it has truly been realized how does that filter into the human experience? And the question is more relevant, not for those uh, exalted or guru figures. I mean, that's one whole exploration, but we're not really interested in that. I'm just using that as an mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. It's how is it lived in the ordinary human being now? Because awakening has come down to us. Mm. You and I know from our own experience, and I mm. speak directly, and from people that we know directly, that, that awakening can take place fully, as fully as I as I know anyway, as an ordinary human being, not as an exalted guru. You may become an exalted guru, but that's really some a different conversation. Well, you're but an are... exalted guru <laughs> <laughs> in some ways. You know, you're not. You're not. I well, mean, you know, yeah. Think, no, no, no. <laughs> The, the, you're, you're a teacher who, who some people will use that term guru, which is a, a, a kind of misnomer in this sort of sense. But you are the, you know, you are living the truth of your own awakened experience. Yes, I, 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 I appear to be that because I have uh, uh, allowed that to come into um into the public arena if you like mm. by it it uh, because there was no choice mm. yeah 
didn't set out to be this, but it, but, but through choicelessness, mm. the only thing that could happen was for that uh, awakened uh, consciousness to come through this vehicle, through uh, yeah, the expression of this vehicle, whether it's through writing or speaking, and now I have become a spiritual teacher. So mm. this becomes a role and an external expression, and that's great. And so some people may see that as the guru, as the exalted state, and all of that. But that's what I'm here for is to unpack that and mm. also show what is human about it and how that is actually lived so that it doesn't remain as some imagination. Otherwise, okay. there's no value to this. Okay. That's, that's, that's very good. That's, that's kind of juicy. So inherent in your, in your, in your teaching, you know, even r right from the get go, you weren't, uh, to, to me anyway, si as an observer in a way, uh, sitting on the e e exalted seat, pointing to the untouchable place. And that's never been your sole purpose. You've been very much, I mean, that book came through quite quite early, quite quickly in Body Enlightenment, where you addressed the illusions, the, yeah, uh, and also addressed the very, very, as we're going back to the subject, the very, very tricky subject of emotions, you know, the whole embracement of the human mess, as such as it is, well, well, just to call it a mess of human, of, of the, the tricky stuff, the sticky stuff, yeah? So, I'm just going to ask you a difficult question, and I don't want to get too uh, bogged down in it. Do you think that human the the, the tendency of historic um, spirituality has been a has come from a predominantly masculine kind of way of looking? at spirituality of way in being with spirituality which is to uh move almost move away from the human mess of emotions as opposed to something new that's happening which is to embrace but not get tangled up in not to lose oneself as in the emotions but not neither to turn away from it is that, has that been a masculine tendency I... over a long time <laughs> Probably yes. I I get very uh, hesitant to split things into masculine and feminine. Yeah. Um, I I don't think it's as black and white as that. I mean, we could look at the whole of life, <laughs> yeah, the expression of life as a masculine expression or a feminine expression. Yeah, we can. Yeah, the Tao of life, the yin and yang <clears throat> of life. So we can just certainly look at it that way, and 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 I appreciate that, and I've often pointed to that myself but i tend not to be so black and white about it i think there has been a tendency whether we call it masculine whether we call it hijacking by the spiritual ego whether we just call it the way consciousness has moved through humanity yeah the tendency has been to to split if you like the the absolute from the relative to me, that's less of a masculine issue and more of an issue of the divided state, a subtle mm. divided state, which is part of the uh, state of human consciousness as it currently stands. And whilst enlightenment, true enlightenment, is going beyond the di divided state, it's the undivided state, which is what non-duality, Advaita, is it still has come through the expression of a subtle division. And I think that's just the state of humanity in general up until now. I think the next stage of evolution or the current stage of evolution, if there is such a thing of evolution and non-dualists don't like talking about evolution, but there is a movement, yeah? There is a movement of something, even the way consciousness expresses itself through the manifest form. Yeah, I think the current stage or phase or frequency is to bring the absolute into the relative, which is the true meaning of non-duality, which is the true meaning of Advaita, the one, not the one that is separate from the two, but the one that is 
beyond and within the two. Mm. Yeah. So it's it's the deepest acceptance of duality. Yeah, that allows non-duality to be truly revealed. So that's the bringing together of the absolute and the relative, and that's what I mean by embodied enlightenment. Yeah. Yeah. Very well said. I liked it. Wow. Okay. Um, so let's draw it. Yeah. No, I'm waiting for your next question. <laughs> no, I'm waiting for my next question as well. <laughs> I just wondered if you were going to draw it into the uh, conversation about emotions. How does that fit in with that? I was going to ask about, you know, if, if you know, you just, you just talked about bringing the absolute into the relative and, yeah, not to put it crudely. And when that happens, the mess of emotions arises because you can understand i mean you know in my experience limited as it is working with people i can understand the tendency or the desire let's say of spiritual seeking to to have the answer to the problem of dark hot fearful angry emotions because they seem to have this frisson to them. And it's not a new thing. It's historic in the human experience. So the tendency, part of the tendency of the, of the spiritual journey is to say, I don't want to have anything to do with that mess. I'd rather leave it behind. Boom. It, it doesn't work to me. It doesn't really work. And I think that's our experience. And so the absolute has to come in and deal with that. Is that is that is that true? Yes, and uh, really, the the conversation is, or the exploration is, uh, slightly different depending on where one is examining it from. <laughs> what do I mean by that? I mean, well. I mean, from the perspective of absolute awakening, where the core pin that holds the idea, because that's what it is really, of a separate self, the idea that then becomes a visceral experience of being separate and then a belief in being separate and then thoughts about being separate and then emotions that stem from that separation. When that pin, that main pin that holds that structure together, it's a psychological structure, is pulled out once and for all, then from that, uh, it's not a perspective, but it is a clear view, then nothing can be denied. No emotion, no feeling can ever be feared again. So from the, yeah, so from the perspective of being on the path towards absolute realization, then all difficult, challenging, intense emotions are invited to be met, embraced, on that path, on that journey. So it depends where we're looking at it from. Wow. <laughs> yeah? And, and I'll add another yeah. factor. If you've done, done, yeah, a lot of work, on the self, mm -hmm. a lot mm. of catharsis, yeah, and we'll speak from our own experience, yeah, mm -hmm. like yes. myself. My my personal journey on the spiritual path didn't start top down; it started bottom up. Well, there was a bit of top down, but 
mostly it took me into the bottom up. What do I mean? I mean that there was a lot of catharsis. I had to get into my suppressed, repressed emotions. Base chakra stuff, yeah. Base chakra, primal, to feel them, to release them, to explore them, to be unafraid of them through body work, through psychological work, through chakra work, through any way that was possible. And so I learned, if you like, to be unafraid of everything. Mm. Yeah, unafraid of any energy because nothing can kill you. Your energies, energies yeah. can't kill you. Rage can't kill you. <laughs> yeah, it can if it's suppressed. I learned to release all that. I called it a catharsis, an emptying of the vessel. And I went on a long journey with that. Yeah. And so there came a point, there was nothing more to be afraid of on that level. And so uh, nothing was denied, nothing was avoided. Everything was felt. And within that, the awakening that took place, which was unexpected, had nothing to stick to. There were no shadows to, yeah. to, to be explored. And yeah. there, there, were, there were no more strategies in order to deal with those difficult emotions. Yes. So actually you were able to sink much more to the uh, almost kind of the, the root strategy, which is just the strategy of the existential. That's yeah, right. Isn't it? It's a very important point yes. to know that. Yeah. Now, now the thing is, not everyone on the spiritual world path, nor everyone who has a profound uh, realization or recognition has done that work. So then it's a surprise when those, uh, let's say, shadow realms come up, yeah? So there can be a profound awakening. And then this, uh, these emotions that mm -hmm. hadn't previously been seen come up. Now, that's where a different kind of invitation takes place. That's where it gets tricky because in the awakening, there can be a, 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 a kind of um, re-identification, no, not re-identification, but an identification with that awakening. Ah, oh, I've awakened. So why are these emotions mm -hmm. now appearing? Why is this intensity here? Why this darkness? And that's where spiritual bypassing takes place a kind of further suppression and denial or an incredible confusion. Mm -hmm. How mm -hmm. can I still be experiencing this if I've had this profound awakening? Well, that's where the work needs to be done. That's mm -hmm. a different kind of work. Mm -hmm. I would say that full awakening, the embodiment of awakening, where it filters all the way into your life, cannot take place until that catharsis takes place. How we do that is, is a whole other question, and there is no formula, but the invitation is to meet everything in an undefended way, with kindness, with tenderness, with openness, and just allow it to be here, and it will untangle itself. Yeah. So that's what I mean by the, it depends on which, where you're, where you're speaking to this from, yeah? <laughs> from which angle, from which part of the journey, because everyone's on a, you know, there's no, everyone's on a different um, point on their own unique journey. I know, they're, 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 you know, part, <clears throat> of, <clears throat> part of the problem, you know, in the West, in that sense, is the, you know, the desire, because we're so product and service based, is to imagine that there's a, a and almost a horizontal ABC to, to it. And if I just follow this, you know, this strategy, this path, then it will lead somewhere. And, and then we're back to the same old issue of one of the myths, illusions, impediments, which is the carrot that dangles in front of the seeker that perennially and forever dangles in front of the seeker, mm -hmm. because just when you you've, you've, you've gotten so close, you can take a bite of that carrot well, there it is again, just a little bit further up. And this is part of the, the, the issue, yeah? That's right. I mean, one, one of the, the perhaps most valuable, I don't know if it's valuable, but <laughs> um, things that I could say to that 
and to 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 anyone on on their unique journey and i do say it and uh, it doesn't really land unless it lands <laughs> until it lands is that awakening self realization liberation from the self created egoic prison is a fresh discovery in other words it cannot come with any overlay of where it might take you where it might lead you how you will get there or what it will look it will look like what it will do to you how it will change you when you finally got it any of that is only uh, an indication that the personhood is the one who is seeking that awakening is, it, is invested yeah. is invested in that and as long as the personhood is invested then it's always slightly up ahead or unavailable wow. so it's a it's a real stripping away mm -hmm. so that it becomes very innocent mm. very innocent discovery and the problem I, these days is that there are so many teachings out there that already a picture of it is created. It has to be a fresh discovery. So it's not about what it looks like and where it will get you according to certain teachings or pointers or descriptions. It's what stands in the way of that for you, for you, for you, because everyone will have something that stands in the way of it because it's already here as I you. I think there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a Western fear, which is very understandable, which we did talk about this morning, which is that the, the lives that we have, which are complex and built on unconsciousness, largely are the unconscious strategies and, and transactions that we, you know, have dialed in, you know, over the over over our lives and that the sense whether it's an unconscious sense or a, or a conscious sense and, and i don't know that if i do what you're inviting me to a moda which is to drop all the strategies and just get naked really you know naked and naked and naked and keep devoting to that nakedness that the the fear what i'm talking about is the fear that my life will fall apart or or everything that I've built up. It's like in the investment, the whole investment that I've made of myself in this world, even though it's, it's, it's full of dysfunctionality and unhappiness, it's all I know. And I'm living in a Western world that's built on these strategies and this, 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 this very edifice, yeah? Isn't there a danger? Because it's not in the East. It's not where you can just go to India and just kind of say, oh, screw it. I'm going to go, you know, wandering around and live on nothing. It's like, yeah, there's, therein lies the rub. There's an innate fear that the whole of the edifice that I've built up will come crumbling down. And that can be a, 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 a blocking. Is that fair? Yes, it can. But I can tell you that awakening has nothing to do with your external life. <laughs> The edifice that will come tumbling down is the psychological edifice that the self is built on. Your life might carry on exactly as it is. Right. But it's uh, <laughs> is a gamble. Yes. It's a complete leap into the unknown. And I no know. one's here yeah. to take the leap. Right. That's the other thing. There's, there's, a, there's a, a belief or a tendency to, to believe that there's somebody here doing this that I need to jump off into the unknown, but there is no self to jump off into the, un to jump off into the unknown. So we're so back really, to the same problem of the, of the idea of the self. Yeah. yeah I mean, it, it's, it's really impossible to, <laughs> impossible to really speak to this from, from, from the freedom to the prison. Yeah. All that's, ha all that happens is because if from the perspective of, the prison, there isn't anything outside of that prison. So I might as well be speaking gobbledygook. However, 
in the speaking of it, the pointing of it, the dialoguing in it, the inquiring into it, which obviously goes into much more subtle realms than, than we're speaking about here in this conversation. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, in that, there is a possibility that some of these uh, uh, veils of perception that come from the self I can't do it, or I have to do something, or my life's going to fall apart, or all these, yeah, these kind of things start to become a little more permeable. Mm -hmm, mm, Yeah. mm. Because something in you, in the individual, yeah, on the path, when they hear words of truth, when they come from that place, Mm. yeah, and I know here we're discussing it more, but when they're actually spoken in the in the depth of inquiry. There's something in that individual who is the seeker that recognizes the truth of it because it is already who you are. It is already what you are prior to the veils, prior to the beliefs, prior to the fears, prior to the imaginations. And so there's a kind of relaxation, Mm -hmm. at least Mm -hmm. for a moment, of those veils. And over time, perhaps, yeah, perhaps they loosen up. So all that's happening really is is a is a facilitation, if that's the word, or a reflection, is a better word, of that which you already are, so that you can recognize it. Mm. That's really all that's happening. So that there's no self that needs to do anything. There is a self that needs to listen from the deep, yeah. But there isn't a self that needs to take a leap into the unknown or, 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 or do anything from the perspective of personhood. It's just that the personhood can start to relax. And in that relaxation, true nature can start to reveal itself. Hmm. Wow. Yes. <laughs> well so the so the, the the myths illusions and impediments are all of the self yes indeed of course they can't be of anything else so it, in a way it doesn't really matter which one of those we're talking about and we haven't covered nearly any of them in many ways we've been darting about hither and thither but what you've just spoken to is a is a is a kind of almost different thing and that is one thing that i've noticed is is and in our meetings and with various things that 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 i've done is that when a when a teacher or a teaching speaks to and this is just to corroborate what you're saying speaks to the deepest within you, within one, when it's spoken to the deepest within me, it almost sets off and has the capacity to set off a chain reaction, individualized, tailor-made by grace to the individual who hears those words. And no matter almost what the strategy is, what the myth is, what the illusion is, what the impediments are, who cares? Who cares what they all are? Because there's just mental masturbation to indulge in the, you know, talking about them. It's intellectualism on a certain level. But actually the truth is to devote to if you've been touched by something, no matter who it is, what teacher it is, what book it is, whatever it is, whether it's a mode or somebody else, to devote to allowing the untangling or the rising up or the, isn't it? That's what we're, that's the yes, juice. That's the, where the, it's really juicy. The the dialogues, even the discourses that I give in the teachings, the dialogues that we're having, the dialogues that are that take place in the teachings, they're all in some ways excuses. They're all mm-hmm. <laughs> mirages. Portals, to do. <laughs> not something to do, yeah. but they're ways in yeah. to this discovery that we're talking about. Yeah. They're just a way in to the reflection of that which you are. Yeah, they're a way in 
That's all. They're not in themselves the 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 true value, if you like. Yeah. And of course, the seeker, the spiritual seeker, the modern day seeker, any any old day seeker, um, <laughs> will listen to some of those dialogues and discourses and try to understand. What are the myths? What are the obstacles? What are you saying here? What does that mean? And so on. And so what's the process? How can I, yeah. And, and so it becomes a, like you say, uh, I, I can't remember what you said, but uh, did you say masturbation or something? Yes, I did actually <laughs> yes. use that word. Yes. It's, it becomes an intellectual <laughs> process. Again, it becomes, it comes from the, the personhood, trying yeah. to understand the spiritual process, trying to accumulate more knowledge. So now I've got it. I understand it. Yeah. And I hear this a lot. Oh, I understand understand yes, yes. Yeah, well, why aren't you living it if you understand okay. understanding must go all the way so we're trying to get beyond this so these are just mm. the facade the face yeah. of things but be- be- beyond that something else is happening yeah okay <laughs> so 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 um uh i i i remember i must admit uh in, in a, it was probably 20 years ago or something like that i went to see john de reuter and I, and I and I also listened in those days to Osho's discourses. I didn't understand a thing. I was completely boggled, and I, I wasn't. I've never. I'm not particularly clever in that sense, you know. So I, did, I was incapable of of working it out. I just sort of sat there and thought, "This is this is insanity. I do not know what is going on." And there was such a beauty in that that I didn't really particularly enjoy at the time and I didn't try and work it out because in those days it was a little bit different culturally then but I remember you know particularly with the fragrance of Osho let's say and the, actually the depth of John de Reuter that something just went and then I remember the most important thing and, and this is what I want to talk to you about was that actually I'd been devoted for 20 years not to anybody, not to you, not to Usher, not to, I didn't care about any, any of those things, but devoted to discover something deeper than the pernicious, endless restlessness of this mind and all its agitation. And that was the only thing which leads me to the next question. And I don't know whether we're going to finish on this. Is it inevitable? Is there anything? that the self can do. Is what inevitable? inevitable? Awakening. Is, is the, in, in the individuation, such as this one, or the one listening, or that person who struggles so much with understanding it, is there an inevitability about it that no matter what the self does, that an awakening or an abiding awakening is either inevitable. Is there anything? My question is clear. Is there anything that the self can do? If we look at it from the point of view of timelessness, then it's inevitable. If we look at it from the point of view of the individuation, it is not inevitable. Because without the quality of self-examination, I don't mean analysis, a psychological mm. analysis, I but I mean the yeah, capacity deep of deep yeah. inquiry into the nature of self, into the nature of my suffering, mm. into the nature of my... And the beliefs around it. Yeah. yeah without that, which is really an ex- existential inquiry, then nothing changes. Right. One can go through one's whole life not inquiring into anything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, simply accumulating experiences. Yeah. Many, many individuations are enamored by experience. Mm-hmm. Of course, yeah. More drama, more pleasure, more... We live in that world. More yeah. pain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the unconscious <clears throat> state. So it's not inevitable. It's not that yeah. there's nothing that the self can do and therefore we just remain asleep. There has to be, first of all, a catalyst 
uh, a sort of uh, uh, grit mm. inside the pearl. There mm. must be a, a peak or a tipping point of psychological suffering where you can't stand it anymore. I can't stand myself anymore. Yeah. It's usually what comes prior to, yeah. to the awakening or at least the journey of the journey, awakening. Yeah. 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 I can't stand myself anymore. Yeah. I can't stand this. It's endless. Yeah it, yeah. it comes to the forefront that you are imprisoned by something. And so starts the genuine search. And it's still not inevitable. No, but something no. begins. But without that, then it's not inevitable. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, I suppose you know. Instantly, you say that. <clears throat> um, I, 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 I feel that uh, there's a, there's a. What am I going to say? There's a, a merit in a constant, ongoing inquiry. That's about it, isn't it? A constant devotion to an ongoing inquiry. Yes, but but again, it 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 needs to come not from yeah <laughs> the self <laughs> that thinks it's doing the right spiritual thing that's creating yeah, but the, a but spiritual the, persona. But, but the self yeah. that thinks it's doing something has an idea up ahead. What I'm saying is the constant inquiry is is no 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 no. Don't get carried away with what's that's up right. ahead. It's here. What's it's now. here now? This. Yes. That's the devotion. What is the source of suffering in this moment? Yes. Not in terms of circumstances no. <laughs> yeah but in terms of your inner landscape can yes. you examine your inner landscape can you feel it can you feel where the movement of of mind yeah the movement of narrative the the movement of swinging between identities i'm good i'm bad i'm lucky i'm unlucky i'm spiritual can you see how that is the root of suffering can you examine that in this moment, in the midst of suffering? Because that's the only true place to examine it. Yeah. Then there's a possibility. Then there is an evolution of consciousness. Then there is a gradual waking up out of egoic identity. And it is gradual until it becomes sudden. Mm. Beautiful. You know, I'm 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 in, I'm inclined to. I don't know whether anybody feels that's in midstream, but to me, that's <laughs> that's kind of there is no stream. There's just this, yeah. Because we've ended up, you know, with despite all of these strategies of the self and all of the myths and all of the impediments, really the the, the this and this and this this moment this is our inquiry we 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 haven't got any sense you and i of what's up ahead in the next few minutes i don't know what's going to happen so it's like being being fully we, we we it's almost like we're trained away from being able to be here that's right it's as simple as that underneath it all in a of way of course that comes it? with its own layers of illusion and delusion and so on but well the whole meditation path, the <laughs> of whole, course we you know, can talk about that another we're not time. going to talk about the meditation path we're just going to you know simply acknowledge that there's a there's a there's a, an incredible uh simple but profound power about being here and true to being here naked naked naked, naked. that's right isn't it <laughs> What else would you like to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, Amanda. I'll save that up for another time. Okay, <laughs> it's been an, as as always. It's an absolute pleasure talking with you. I never it, it never gets it never gets uh, never gets dry and everything. And I hope that it kind of entertains, stimulates, interests, piques curiosity. You know in some way we haven't covered the whole business we're not talking in that kind of way it's been a, a genuine honest uh sincere exploration of 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 just another nuance on the spiritual path please um like and subscribe if you can if you if you know where you are i don't know what you're listening to this on wherever it is enjoy it um share it if you feel called to come and see us come to our meetings or whatever um we appreciate you listening to this podcast and uh i'm not sure who we've got on next time it might be cavi 
<laughs> asking difficult and entertaining questions of a motor or hopefully or maybe it will be somebody else who's who's got something another angle on this mysterious and uh beguiling and bewitching journey that we call mm. the spiritual path Amoda, thank you very much um yeah. have a good day and be well okay thank you see Goodbye. you in the kitchen <laughs> i'll see you in the kitchen with the dog <laughs> as usual Goodbye. Bye-bye.